And after O Canada, we're just moments away from the ball being dropped here and mark their opponents, the Halton, Bull, Bull, Halton Hill Bulldogs. They also had got their season started on Monday up against Barry, and they've put up a pretty good showing against a real good Barry team. Yeah, overtime loss, two goals, uh, not a bad showing, especially for the first game. But Holland Hills is a center that they expect to win, and they're going to be looking for a good show tonight as well. They definitely will. The starting goaltenders for today's game for the Halton Hill Bulldogs, they'll go with Brady Curran, who you just saw on your screen, and Reed Fitton between the pipes for the Wilmot Wild. The opening faceoff goes the way of the Wild. The ball rolled back for Fitton to deal with, and up the floor come the Wild with a nice head of steam here is the likes there of number 11, Dylan Kuntz. Kuntz tries to throw it back, shot on, nice save made early on by Curran. Nice behind the back pass, and Blake Weidman was stopped on the first good scoring chance early on in this lacrosse game. Uh, Dylan Kuntz just come back from a, a cup of coffee up in the Junior B ranks. He's uh, looking to prove that uh, maybe the Junior B team made a mistake and let him go, but uh, a decent player nonetheless. Get ourselves a whistle there. Not sure if it was a penalty call. Doesn't look like it. I, like, yeah, it looks like actually it is. Looks like referee Palm, Palmer Funkenhauser calling the wild on a hold on that play. And so the Halton Hill Bulldogs will go to the power play just about 20 or 30 seconds or so into this lacrosse game. Taking it on here for the Bulldogs is Chorkev Evans, fed back here for Tar. Charkev Evans, now Zach Tarr had a great opening game for Halton Hills. Charkev Evans shot a nice save made by Fitton. Loose ball popped up in the air. And where is it? Now dealt with nicely by the Wild and Colton Bess. Colton now will get a nice head of steam. At least brings it up across the floor. But possession will go back the way of Halton Hills. And a 10 second violation. Uh, Colton couldn't get into the offensive zone in 10 seconds. And that's good job by Halton Hills to get the, call, the ball back on that play. 121 remains in the Bulldogs power play. Kick it off there, Chorkev Evans to Tar. Chorkev Evans, Zach Tar, nice little set of give and go here. Looking to clear the lane up, shot on block. Nice spot, but it just sticks in there from uh, Bradley Bro. Getting in there and good scrum going up against the end boards and fit and won't take any chances. He'll just play that himself. Now taking it up, going back the other way. Here are the Wild. Settling it down here is Kuntz. Kuntz feeds this one back for Ryan Buller. And Buller had himself an excellent game on Friday night. Five goals, a five-point night for Buller. Now puts him second in points for Wilmot. And one thing about Ryan Buller, he knows where the net is. That's for sure. A five-goal uh, outburst, so to speak, uh, to make the, make the game uh, close in the dying minutes of Friday's game. But uh, they're happy to have him in the lineup as well. Definitely are. Wilmont always seems to find those guys that know how to shoot the ball and find the back of the net. As we had ourselves a whistle here. Looks like an equipment uh, yeah. check for Reed Fitton. Yeah, Reed Fitton will get those pads looked at right now. I'm not sure if that's the main issue, but once again, a section in the game here that'll slow the momentum down and keeps 30 seconds of the man advantage for Halton Hills. Actually, just a stick issue. There's a lot of mutual respect between the players and the referees in this game, and I think they gave Reed the benefit of the doubt for a little bit of an equipment check on that. So taking it on here, Zach Tarr. Tarr thought about the shot, made the pass right back there for Hayden Chorkev Evans. Ball shot goes up high off the end boards, bounces out, and Tarr puts on his track meet skills and wins that back. Ten seconds remain on the Bulldogs power play. Shot thought about the shot, hesitation, get it back for Tarr, a drive that goes wide. And off the end boards, and that's gonna do it. We're gonna go back to even strength lacrosse to the cross. And as well, the shot clock had expired. So big win here. Nice penalty kill from the Wilmot Wild. Yeah, it was. It was a uh, you know fortuitous goal for Halton Hills to get off on the power play and get their quick start, but uh, equal to the task, uh, the Wilmot Wild and killing that penalty off. Shot came on from the Wilds, Kent Radburn, but some sticks in front of it slowed its momentum. 
But still the Wild regain possession here sick with a, now a fresh shot clock. Thought about the shot there was Ethan Warden. Hesitating, lost his stick and the ball and everything. So now a big break going back the other way. Trying to catch the Wilmot Wild on a line change there was Aaron McDonald. But he had to do the smart thing and realize he needed some numbers and support and waited for the line change. So Zach Tarr with it for the Bulldogs. Down to the right wing corner, trying to spin and make something happen of it's Patrick Cook. Cook thought about the pass, keeps it, goes up. A nice shot denied by Fitton, who just got a piece of that one, robbing the likes there of Riley Dexter. And the shot clock expires, so you know, Halton Hills, Mark, for being the visitor team, they're really pushing the pace early on in this game. They're playing that gritty Halton Hill style that they are, and they're uh, keeping the Wilmot Wild back on their heels, Jason. Hayden Berger stops, pops, comes in, shot on. Just getting a piece of it to steer it wide was Brady Curran. Oh, some nice moves by Hayden Berger to get that shot off. And Berger, always a pesky player, got himself a great shot, not afraid to, to mix it up as well. And see what he can do. Look at this backtrack defensively. And what a hit put on there by Weidman. We're just only the third game of the season, but <laughs> it feel like these teams have been playing for about a couple months now. Turning the other way, there's Corkshire Evans. Has a good defensive presence all around him from Matt Wyman. Go to the far wing. Now Corkshire Evans stops. Thinks about the shot, and the shot clock expires. Great defense from the Wild yet again. Yeah, unlike basketball, where you act, uh, the ball actually has to hit the net within the, before that 30-second uh, shot clock uh, goes off. So even though he might have got the shot off, but uh, it wasn't on net, so Wilmot Wild ball. Taking it on now is Tyler Townsend. Off for Buller. Buller shot all, oh, tried to feed it all alone for Townsend, but couldn't complete the pass. Ball is still loose in the Halton Hills end. Who's gonna come away with it? And it's gonna be Davin Kelly, but he gets hauled down. And it's gonna be actually still wild possession. And they get a fresh shot clock to boot. Warden fed that one around, taking it on Weidman. Weidman for Buller, Buller a drive, save made there from Curran. Almost snuck in between the legs there, but a little spin to the uh, the left of the goalie and still scoreless game. Wasn't even sure Curran knew where it was, just had good positioning so his pads could steer it wide. Now some difficulty handling these passes for Halton Hills, Patrick Cook swarmed on by a Couple wild, and now Matt Wyman's got it. Wyman breaks in, shot on, scores! Matt Wyman gets the opening goal of the game, and the Wilds go up one to nothing. I'm not sure Brayden Hahn's gonna get an assist on this, but uh, he made things happen here with the, the press and the turnover on that four check. And then Matt uh, Wyman picking up the ball. Making no mistake. Here we get to take a look at it. And there's Wyman. Straight to the net. Goes far side. Gives Wilmot Wild the one nothing lead. That's Wyman's first goal of the season. And Wyman, Mark, is always a guy that's a big benefactor and is always an important player for this Wilmot Wild team. Yes, always does his job. Great team player. And a breakaway developing off a broken play. Coming in now, it's Jordan Hawthorne. Hawthorne shot on. Nice save made by Curran. I think as well the post got a piece of that. Always oh, part of the goalie equipment. <laughs> but now, that defensive presence right now is causing a Halton Hills to be a little unorganized with their passing. Can't complete those crisp passes, which we saw early on. Penalty yeah. is coming up to Wilmot. Sick. Touched up by Fitton there, so the whistle goes. And the Wild will head to the penalty box yet again. Yeah, it looks like a bad change for the Wild. They sent their D guy out before their old guy got to the bench, and so they have a, a bench minor for too many men. And Halton Hills is going to get their second power play opportunity of the afternoon. They moved the ball well at Halton Hills on their first power play, but they couldn't pull the trigger and put a shot on Reed Fitton. Have to find a way to do that. Too many give and go passing, but you got to have some release here. Yeah, absolutely. I get the goalie moving and get some open floor. Reed Finn's having a good, 
look at each and one of these shots, as you had mentioned. And Michael Holmes put a shot right on the chest of Fitton. Now back the other way is Kuntz for the Wild. Kuntz will just flip that off for Berger. Berger doing the smart thing, eating up some clock before he makes the pass off for Wyman. Pass, though, couldn't be completed clean there for Kuntz. And nice defense from the Halton Hill Bulldogs. Taking it on was Bryce Williams. Now fed up for Hayden Chorkep Evans, who's had himself, at least he's been involved in the action here for the Bulldogs. Maybe one or two shots, but that's the guy the Bulldogs want. Number seven, Zach Tarr. Shot just goes wide and hits the end boards and bounces out. Can they keep it in play? No, will retreat all the way back to the Halton Hills end with 51 seconds remaining on the Bulldogs power play and the shot clock expires, so will be Wilmot ball. Yeah, great job by the Wilmot Wild defense. Man short and got a 30 second shot clock violation out of the deal. And that shot there we saw from Shorkshire Evans goes wide. Just great presence overall here on this penalty kill for the Wild defensively. They're really making it tough for the Wild to get anything in close on Fitton. Buller for Warden. Warden getting pressed up on the near boards and Buller tried to make a nice move but lost the ball in the process and there's a good shot clock expiring for Wilmot so Halton Hills gets the ball. Tar. Tar spins away from the pressure. Fed it back for Holmes. Holmes. Now Tar again. Tar thought about the shot from far, and that's going to do it for the power play. Back to even strength lacrosse. Spinning away from the check there was Cook. Cook still with it. Shot on goes wide. Bounces up high, and the shot clock expires again. Just seems like Holland Hill, they've done well to move the ball, but they just can't find the way to put the shot on or waiting just a little too long, Mark. Yeah, some great individual skill, especially on that effort that you saw by Cook, but uh, just couldn't find uh, find the net. Townsend scores! Tyler Townsend makes this one two to nothing on Townsend's first goal of the season. Wilmot Wild taking the two goal lead here about halfway through the first period. We'll see uh, Hayden Berger will end up with the ball down deep in the corner. Well, a nice one-handed flip up to Townsend and Townsend makes no mistake and gives Wilmot Wild the two goal lead. Halton Hill is defensively a little too much ball watching there of Berger as he was able to get that one-handed pass and Townsend buries it, but Tar comes back the other way. Nice shot on, better save made from Fitton. And a loose ball, will Koontz get a hold of it? No, Brady Curran does well to play that one out. Get ourselves another whistle here. Mark, it seems like every time Halt Mills, they've had the power play, they've had the man, they've had their opportunities to get these goals, but Wilmot will kill them up. They come back the other way and get themselves on the score sheet. As there was a nice drive from Buller. Yeah, a little bit of a momentum switch here, especially coming off the two uh, power plays by Halton Hills and, and as you said Wilmot Wild capitalizing and kind of turning the tides here a little bit in yep. the first period. It was a little rough go for Wilmot. Couldn't get that ball possession. Couldn't find their way into the Halton Hill end as Halton Hill is dictating the play but good defense turns the tide and good defense usually leads to great offense and that's why we've seen those two goals early on here from the Wild. Now picking it up off the floor taking it on to this uh, Theron Aslan. Now fed it across for Jordan Hawthorne. Hawthorne feeds that one back for Nagy. Now taking it up is Kent Radburn. To Warden, ball bounces up. Tried to keep it alive was Jordan Hawthorne, but ball still bouncing around, but the Wild regained possession. One second left on the shot clock. Nice shot from far out there by Ethan Warden, but easily to turn it away was Curran. Yeah, Ethan Warden just trying to get a reset there and hopefully one of their his players would be able to pick up the ball, but uh, Holland Hill's defense there to corral the rebound. Tar feeds it across there for Chorkev Evans. Now Tar on the near wing. 10 seconds remain, trying to spin away from the defender there of Ethan Fitton. Shot goes wide, ball bouncing up and putting on his a good set of run here is Hahn. 
Hahn at least brings it into the Halton Hills end. Hahn off the corner, scores! <laughs> What? Uh -oh. oh, they're saying he's Priest in the crease. Violation. I'm not sure. We'll I'll see the replay on that one. But what a great effort by Braden Hahn. Picking up, hustling down the floor, picking up that loose ball. It looked pretty good from up here. That's a tough break there for Hahn. It's such an individual effort. But no harm, no foul. Still the Wild up 2 to nothing on these Holton Hill Bulldogs. Holton Hill, they need to find something. Find a way to find the back of the net. Snell will go behind the net now as Patrick Cook. Fed on. Spinning away, is Cook again. Cook shot on, but he's in the crease, so crease violation and an extra shot from Cook taking down Bradley Bro. No penalty there. 8.30 remain here in the first period. Ryan Buller for Townsend. Shot from far out, came on from Weidman, Blake Weidman. They get it back for Blake. Weidman to Hayden Berger. Buller thought about the shot. Nice swim move comes in, shot on, lost the ball at the last second. He was absolutely flattened there by the defense of the Bulldogs. Shot on again from Weidman. And we get ourselves a whistle. Possession goes the way of the Bulldogs. Oh, some relentless pressure there by the Wild. Only saved by an interference call off ball to give the ball back to Holt Mills. And we get a little bit of a scrum going on by the Wilmot bench. And you obviously can't have any infractions or any incidents going on in that change area, Mark. No, no, Ryan Buller doing some crashing in the offensive zone. I think he may have had a couple comments thrown his way as he was going to the bench. And looks like uh, referee Mark Smith is going to settle things down by sending a couple of them to the box. Yeah, we got number 66 for the Halton Hill Bulldogs, Jack Mowat, heading to the penalty box. And as well for the Wild. Ryan Buller, yep. it looks like. Yeah, Ryan Buller. So that's a big piece once again. So we'll have four on four lacrosse for the next four minutes. Or two minutes, I should say. But once again, it's the Bulldogs that have the opening, the possession here. They got to make something happen. That was a little too much on that pass. Bouncing up and a lot of room to run right now. Coming on in is Hawthorne, Jordan Hawthorne. Nice save made by Curran on the breakaway. It looked like number five, Cody Hudson, if I'm not mistaken, on that play there. Jason, with great effort, great hustle nonetheless. Yeah, great hustle, great effort. And now the, uh, excuse me, the Bulldogs will get this here off for Tar. Tar stops, pops, tries to break in. Loose ball, nice spin to keep that alive by Justin Percy. And his shot was saved but was in the crease, so will be wild ball. Yeah, nice job by the Wilmot Wild. That was where Hawthorne, I think, pushed the uh, Wilmot player into the crease and got a crease violation. It gives his offense a chance to Add to their two goal lead. Taking it back and trying to get pushed out. Nice defense from Tyler White of the Bulldogs, but breaking his way through and shot on. Nice save made going post to post by Curran. It's great cross crease pass, but uh, Berger going through the crease and being the first one to pick up the ball, that'll give it back to Halton Hills. Halton Hills trying to break their way in with Bryce Williams. Williams feeds the pass off while the Bulldogs go for a bit of a line change. Up the floor is Tar. Zach Tar, 33 seconds remain of this four on four. Fed on, nice drive, shot on, just high and wide there from Cook. Still a loose ball. Can the Wild get a hold of it? They're trying to get it with Bess. And the shot clock expires, so it will be Wild ball after all. Beautiful pick and roll between Cook and Tar, but as you said, Jason, they're just not finding the net. Yeah, they can't find the net. They've done very well to get those openings, but when you get an open look like that at the cross, you got to at least capitalize on one of them. Warden bounces off a check, comes on in, stops, pops, tries to throw it back to the top of the point there, but having to chase it down is Evan Girdler, and that'll do it for this, these two penalties as we're back to even strength lacrosse. Just a couple seconds left on the shot clock and can't get down the net, so Alton Hills is going to get a chance to bring it back up. Alton Hills definitely will. 
And they need something going. They've, as we've said oh, so far through this first period, it's been a nice start for them, moving the ball and showing some speed and ball movement, but haven't put their shots right on Fitton, or if they have come on Fitton, they're straight at him. They're easy to be saved. Tar feeds it back for Chorkster Evans. Shot came on there from the likes of Riley Dexter, but Fitton sprawls out to make the save. Now Tar. Loose had the ball knocked out of his stick. Picked up by the Wild. Hahn takes this now. Braden Hahn was denied that sensational individual effort goal moments ago to Hayden Berger. Now Buller. Thought about the shot. Shot from far out there from Radburn. Didn't miss by much. Picked up here from Halton Hills with Bryce Williams. Williams trying to find his way through and does. Nice job in the effort. Takes a big hit though from Ryan Buller. Buller showing you can do it offensively as well. Lay the, the body. Scooped up off the end boards. Fed in, bouncing around, and Curran makes the save. Oh, Buller just, he had quite a shift there, creating that loose ball and almost got fed the, uh, the, the lead breakaway pass and got a scoring chance for himself, but good shift by him. Spinning away from the man, there's Chorkster Evans. Flips it up for Cook. Good pressure defensively by this wild team, really forcing Halt Hills to be on the far outside. Now Cook with it. Cook again coming in, shot on, off the post. Great effort by Cook. Got the shot off, but then stepped in the crease, and that's what gave the ball back to Wilmot. Well, Cook said himself quite a first period as well. One of the guys getting, getting those minutes that he's rightfully deserved, but snake bit and either crease violations or some posts. That's been the story so far early on for these Bulldogs. Radburn trying to get that separation. Shot on, went wide. That shot on from Girdler. And that shot clock expires, so good defense again by the Bulldogs. Yeah, Bulldogs actually a little short bench today by a few runners. They're going to want to keep this close and hopefully uh, be able to pull something out in the late stages of the game. Oh, bouncing off the check off the boards there was Dexter. And spinning away again, here's Chorkshire Evans. Chorkshire Evans tried to get the shot off, but good job by Berger to knock the ball out of his stick. Hayden Berger thought about bringing it up, but does the right thing, waits for the line change. And he'll easily flip that out to Ethan Warden. Taking it on now is Blake Weidman. Settling it on now for Buller. Buller tries to spin, that didn't work out, but has the, the numbers and some support. Shot from far out from Nagy, save made. And it's gonna say actually still going the way for Wilma and they get a fresh shot clock to boot mark. Yeah, Wilma Wild, uh, you know, the game's been back and forth, but uh, when they're getting their chances, they're putting the pressure on and getting Wilma or the uh, Halton Hills Bulldogs back on their heels. Good double team set of defense by Halton Hills. Ball still bouncing around, now scooped up. Shot on, save made again by Brady Curran. And Curran's made about three to four sensational saves here at the, after the midway point of this first, Mark. Yeah, absolutely, he got knocked down a bit on that as Cody Hudson looked like was coming in on the shot, but uh, he's gonna get a little bit of a, a timeout here and Coach Blaine McCauley pleading his case there and saying, I mean, that's a little goalie interference, but. Well, a, a timeout taken here, and I think it's a good timeout to take because as we talked about Halton Hills, they've played themselves a real good period, but got to find ways to break through this, this tough Wilmot Wild defense to get those one-on-one -on -one scenarios against Fitton. Yeah, as you said, and the few times that they have had those those looks at the at the, at the net, they've either missed the net or have not really tested Fitton that much. But and, and nothing to take away anything from Reed Fitton, but uh, the, the Wilma Wild defense is really helping them out a, a great deal this game. Absolutely, they are. I think that's if you're head coach Rick Windle, that's something you really like to see your defense putting the pressure on and stymieing a pretty solid offense that the Bulldogs bring to the table. Still ball bouncing around and 
whistle goes, we're gonna, it looks like a slashing penalty is gonna be coming up to Wilmot. Well, it looks like Hunter Schmidt getting the, uh, the gate to the box on that. And this will give uh, Halton Hills their third power play chance of the, the game with, uh, well, pretty much the rest of the first period, at least to give uh, themselves a chance to get on the board. Yeah, this is the third power play for Halton Hills. And Halton Hills in their season opener on Monday went three for 12 on the power play. So this is the third kick at the can. And they got to find ways to get something going right there for a power play that has struggled early on in this season. Taking it back there was Chorkshire Evans. And he gets it again. Drive goes just wide, but that one had some force on it. And the shot clock expires and about one second differential from game clock and this power play for Halton Hills. So looks like Halton Hills will carry this power play over for one second into the second period. Buller feeds that one through. Get it again for Buller as him and Girdler do the give and go. Good work here by Buller showing his lacrosse smarts, eating up some time on that power play. Eight seconds remain on the shot clock and it's coughed up. Nice defensive work by Halton Hills. Going back the other way, they go. Shot just goes wide and couldn't capitalize on that one. That was Tyler Brennan. Now picked up by the Wild. Hayden Berger. Actually, it's Wyman with it. Now he goes back for Berger. Fed for Nagy. As we hit 30 seconds remaining to go here in this first period. Wyman tries to break in at a gain, but he's got two Bulldogs all over him. And those Bulldogs hopped over Wyman like a fresh chew toy. Held him a little bit too long, though, and that gave the ball back to Wilmot Wild, who are going to look to uh, maybe get a shot off before the period's over, but definitely to kill off the rest of this penalty. Oh, they pull the goalie. That, and it's a loose ball kicking around, Jason. It's fitting right now, not sure what he wants to do. He's headed to the bench, but nearly gave it up. Coming back the other way, and that's gonna do it for this first period. Real exciting first period. Wild a little slow to get going, but nonetheless, they were able to get that offense in gear, and they're up two to nothing after the first period, Mark. Yeah, gritty game, I think, by both teams. Halton Hills, uh, you know, had their chances for sure. Uh, could be uh, a two-goal swing either way, really, but uh, Wilmot Wild being the team that's found the back of the net. So after one, it's the Wilmot Wild two, the Halton Hill Bulldogs nothing. We'll take a quick break and be back for more coverage here on Rogers TV.
Well, welcome back inside the Wilmot Recreation Complex here as after one period of play, the Wilmot Wild are up two to nothing on the Halton Hill Bulldogs. And right now, I'm joined by one of those Halton Hill Bulldogs, and that's Michael Holmes. Michael, it was a pretty good first period for you guys, really dictating the pressure early on, but couldn't find those shots on net. Uh, how did you guys assess that first period? Uh, yeah, I think like our offense needs to get a bit better, hit those shots like you said, but on, deck, on defense, we were nice and strong there, got limiting the two goals, so that's always good. You had three power plays to work with. You'll have one second left of a power play. Uh, you guys were able to draw some penalties. Uh, I mean, obviously, a, a pretty good start to that game in, in that aspect for you guys. Yeah, I think, like, we need to capitalize on those power plays. It would be better, but, like, it's good to have the opportunities to use them. But. Your goaltending's been sensational here. He made about three to four big saves, or this game could have been a little bit more open. Talked about how well your goaltending was in that first. Yeah, I think our goalie really stood on his head there, you know, kept us in it. If, if it wasn't for him, it'd be a lot worse than 2 nothing right now. Well, Michael, it was a, a real good first period effort for you. What would you say is the biggest thing you need to do to make the adjustments heading into the second? I think we just need to tighten up our offense a little bit, you know, capitalize on the opportunities that we do have, and then try to keep this game close. Well, Michael, thanks for your time here. We'll let you head back into the locker room to get ready for the second period. We'll take a quick break. we we'll back for more coverage here on Rogers TV. Thanks. Welcome back inside the Wilmot Recreation Complex where after one period of play the Wilmot Wild are up two to nothing on the Halton Hills Bulldogs and Mark it was Halton Hills that had a lot of opportunities they had about three technically four power plays to get something going but it's the Wild that have those two goals. Yeah that's been the you know the really the difference and, and actually every time that Wilmot's come out of the uh, killing off the power play they've they've turned the momentum on on Halton Hills as we'll see right here on the goal here look at this effort from Wyman finds his way through and gets the opening goal of the game uh, after once again another big penalty kill defensively by the wild yeah great job by Braden Hahn also helping turn over that over and here's Hayden Berger with a one-handed flip over to Tyler Townsend who buries it to give him the two goal lead two goal lead there the Halton Hills Bulldogs have really made it some efforts but nothing to show for it right now. It should be a real interesting second period, Mark. And we'll get you all prepared for that. Get yourself your favorite beverage at home. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back for second period action here on Rogers TV.
and welcome back inside the Wilmont Recreation Complex where the second period is just underway. We thank you for spending your Sunday afternoon with us here on Rogers TV. I'm Jason Hagholm, joined alongside me is Mark Schutzkowski. And Wilmot now with a nice start with them here, getting the opening possession in this second period. There's Weidman, lost the handle at the last second, but Radburn gets it, shot from far out. Nice save made by Brady Curran. The hack knocked the stick right out of the hands of Sean Caruso, but Tar gets a hold of it for the Halton Hills Bulldog. Back the other way there for Patrick Cook. Cook tried to maybe a sneaky behind the back pass. That didn't work out and a huge cross check and penalty's gonna be coming up to Justin Percy for that cross check. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they get uh, called for an illegal cross check for two minutes or it looks like a check in from behind, double minor for four minutes. Well, for Wilmot, this is an area they really wanted to work on is their power play that went, I believe, 0 for 9 on Friday night, Mark. And in lacrosse, an 0 for is kind of an unheard of thing. It's uh, tough to do, but for Wilmot, they now get four minutes to work at it to get themselves a power play goal. Yeah, yeah, the way they, the explosive names they have on offense, that's almost <laughs> unbelievable, but uh, they'll have four minutes to see what they can do here. So Radburn dishes it off, they get it here, shot on scores! And it only takes a couple of seconds for Evan Girdler to get the power play goal, and it's three to nothing for the Wild. Oh, just as you said, their sticks were cold on the power play, Jason, they come in and cash in with a big one. Great movement there, and there's Girdler getting his first goal of this season as well. So, a couple firsts here for each goal the Wild have had. Let's take a look at the power yeah, play. Radburn one. with the ball up top over to, to Buller, who kicks it back to Girdler. They all seal off and gives Girdler a lane to shoot, and he makes no mistake. That was a nice rocket there from Evan Girdler, one of the newer players on this Wilmot Wild team, Mark. Well, I'm sure he's going to get a few pats on the back and, <laughs> and making some friends in that dressing room. Well, you got a shot like that, you're welcome on anyone's power play. And he capitalized there and still, now 140 left to go on a man advantage since it was the double minor. That pop ball bounces out into the Wilmot Wild bench as they will get that here back in on with the action underway. Weighing his options here, shot on, nice save made by Curran for the likes there of Warden again. Now Weidman for Warden. Fed up for Blake Weidman. Oh, couldn't settle that one on a stick cleanly. Could Tyler Townsend, already a goal today, was looking for number two. Shot on from Hudson, just went wide. And I think as well, Curran got a piece of that. 57 seconds remain on the wild man advantage. Shot from far out, save made by Curran on another bullet, this time from Ethan Warden. Uh, some nice ball movement and uh, opportunities by the uh, second power play unit for the wild, looking to make this a four goal lead, but Curran doing a good job. Trying to get away from a man there is Sean Caruso. He's done very well with two wild draped all over, make it three now. And eating as much time left on this penalty kill, now taken down to about 25 seconds left of a wild of the wild power play. Caruso shot clock expires, but that's what you want to see on a penalty kill, Mark. Oh, great job by Caruso. He's keeping it. He's taking a hack and a whack down in the corner, but uh, doing his job and killed off 30 seconds of that uh, of that penalty. Now 10 seconds remain on the man advantage. Radburn. This is the power play line that got that goal and they make it another one again. Give it to Hayden Berger. Another power play goal for the Wild. It's 4-0 Wilmot. Some nice soft hands there by the Wilmot Wild offense. Berger back here for the second game. Working well with Radburn. Radburn feeds it down. They kick it back up top. Radburn. Goes down low. That was actually the first one, I believe. Yeah, I think that. <laughs> but it was good We're looking at it again. Yep. There's a great chance from Townsend, save made by Curran. 
But you get Hayden Berger, that's his second of the season, and you can expect Mark many more to come from Hayden Berger. And back the other way off a loose ball. Nice job to come on the floor at the last second were the Bulldogs with the line change in Caruso, but Wyman, he's a speedy one. Made something out of nothing there. Was in the crease there, so will be Halton Hill's ball. Picked up now by Schmidt. Shot on from best save made by Curran. Hudson tried to make something happen. Now taking on Hunter Schmidt. Schmidt, nice job to scoop that up and he'll head off there for Weidman. Weidman a drive, just goes wide but didn't miss by much. Still, ball bounces back and Wilmot regains possession. Pick, picked up now for Hudson. He lost the handle for Weidman. Shot on from far out. Nice save made by Curran as Weidman was looking five hole. Yeah, that was a tough one for Curran to handle. Almost handcuffed him, but uh, he got a piece of it and kept it out of the net, and he's doing his part to try and keep Holton Hills in this game. Well, he's been a, a, a big benefactor in this one, as we heard from Michael Holmes that he played sensational in that first, or this one could have been broken wide, a little bit more wide open. Fed on, tried to go behind the back there was Warden. Now up for Berger. Berger tried to make something happen there with Blake Weidman, but Weidman had the ball knocked off his stick. And this has been a period where the ball is all. Oh, shot oh. from far out. <laughs> Unbelievable goal from Berger. Bout Berger had a little extra mayo on it on that one. Make it four to nothing for Wilmot on Hayden Berger second. Well, a tough angle shot there, not the one the coaches actually uh, they are preaching. They kind of cringe when a player takes that shot, but Hayden Berger here, you'll see the ball on a sharp angle from way outside, a little bit of a screen, and sometimes that's all it takes, and only good things happen when you uh, get the ball on net. And as well, penalty was uh, taken by Dylan Kuntz there, so Halton Hills get themselves Another power play and get a chance to at least get on the board here. Yeah, 0 for 3 in the first period here. They're going to look to have to cash in being down five goals here. In the There's a period. great shot on from Holmes. Our first period interview, but Fitton up to the task. Fitton hasn't seen much action here in this second period, but when called upon, flashed a big pad save. That's sometimes tough on a goal. He can lose his focus a little bit, but nice job by Fitton. Taking it up is Buller. Buller, a drive goes wide, but still a, a scrum goes on for it. Flipped around, and one out here by the Bulldogs as taken up Tyler Brennan. Brennan will weigh his options. Fed back for Tar. Picked up now by Torkchev Evans. Now Torkchev Evans again, shot on save made by Fitton. Still loose ball. And what hustle there by Hayden Torkchev Evans to at least keep this alive for the Halton Hills Bulldogs. Thought about the shot there was Holmes. Now back for Tar, shot scores. Zach Tar gets the Bulldogs on the board and it's a power play goal finally for the Bulldogs make it now a five to one score line. Uh, that's just what Hall and Hills needed to get some momentum back and get into this game and cash in. Finn's been stoning them all game and the Wilmot Wild defense been playing hard, but here you see Zach Tar getting the ball up top. Takes a look, fires it top shelf and Finn just going, ah, you know what, give him credit. That was a great shot. Yeah, Tar, that's his fourth of the season. Had a hat trick in the debut game in the inaugural game this season for Halton Hills and Halton Hills looking for another nice save made by Fitton stoning Chorkster Evans. Fed down low for the Bulldogs. They look to make a move there. Nice drive by Dexter goes just wide and it looks like it hit the top of the mesh there. So it will be Wilmot ball with an errant pass but now scooped up here by Bess. 
Make a little extra kick in the uh, Halton Hill step there that last shift, and Wilmot Wild be looking to settle things down here on this offensive possession. Well, Wilmot obviously having the bodies here helps out a lot as they're able to get more line changes on. Shot on from Girdler, better save by Curran. Oh, Brady Curran had himself a nice game between the pipes here for the Bulldogs. Now up the floor back the other way is Davin Kelly for Halton Hills. Bounce pass, not settled cleanly, but finally under control with it is Justin Percy. Percy, little quick bounce for, er, for Tar. Nice pick set there by Jack Mowat. But unfortunately, the Bulldogs couldn't make something happen with it. Shot clock expires. Back the other way are the Wild. Taking it on is Ethan Warden. Dealt with by Bullard. And just good movement here by Wilmot. Shot on, scores! It's Radburn this time. Make it six to one for Wilmot. Oh, Wilmot really finding their groove here in the second period. Doing a great job moving the ball around. And Kent Radborn getting, as you can see here on the screen, move it around. Radburn finding that lane, puts all of that big frame of his in, into that shot and buries it. Oh, score! Right off the draw, coming back the other way. Make it Tyler Nagy, and it's now 7-1 to one for Wilmot. Wilmot Wild Offense today in this second period. They're quicker than a hiccup, Mark. Oh, unbelievable play. Nagy a little quiet today after a big game last Sunday. Comes up big here with another beautiful behind-the-back goal. Rivaling the one he scored last week. Nice play by Nagy. Gives the Wilmot Wild a 7-1 lead. Those goals came about 10 seconds apart between the Radburn goal and now the Nagy goal. And, you know, Mark, sooner or later you knew this could happen. And it, the inevitable has happened for Alton. They did really well to keep it close in the first. But just the amount that Wilmot's got more bodies, you think it, Halton Hill's getting a little tired right now. Yeah, and the bodies that they have are all weapons up front for the Wilmot Wild, and they're showing it right now. And showing some great defense. Wyman, after one of the Halton Hills Bulldogs was stood up, here's Koontz. Shot from far out, nice save made by Curran. Sprawling down to get that one in the chest. The thing is, these goals have come so fast, there's still so much time remaining here in the second. Now 10.54 remaining. And Wyman shot a nice shoulder save made by Curran. Loose ball now picked up here by Halton Hills. Taken on by Hayden Chorksev Evans. Nice pass. Wasn't to the man intended, but Max Wittis picked it up, but lost it as Buller nearly had himself a 2-1-0 scenario. Now Buller with it again. Buller smartly flips that off for Hudson. Fed on, trying to drive down low. Save made by Curran and as well in the crease call. Well, Wilma Wild putting a lot of pressure on that previous play and here trying to catch the guys up top and put a lot of pressure on Halton Hills and they're forcing some mistakes. Taking it on is Jack Mowat. Ball bouncing, Fitton won't take any chances. We'll use the much bigger goal stick to scoop that up. Now tries a home run ball. That's a little bit too much on it, but Hudson still tracking this one down. It took a nice bounce. Hudson takes a hit into the corner. So Berger will try to fight and scrum that one free and does. What effort there from Hayden Berger. A great play by the Wild. They have just taken over this game here as the score would indicate, but also by the play here. They've been all over Halton Hills. Radburn a drive and he's a little shaken up after that one. Has to shake the cobwebs off, put his glove back on as well. But save was made by Curran. Behind the back shot from Radburn this time. Hudson shot on save made by Curran again. Two sensational saves in a row from Brady Curran. Yes, great job by Curran. He's not giving up here. He's got a lot of pride. He's going to want to keep this, uh, this score as low as possible. He knows he's getting pestered with shots. And shot from way out there from Cook. 
easily dealt with by Fitton. No. The far wing by Tar. Tar oh, made the pass off there for Dexter, but he lost it, gets it back. Still, once again, falls out of Riley Dexter's stick. Dexter needs some support, gets the screen he needs. Fed off here for Percy. Trying to drive his tar, stops, pops, trying to break in his tar down low. Nice save made by Fitton as Fitton cut the angle down. A great effort by Tar, but just a sharp angle shot and uh, ran out of real estate. So great job by the Wilmot Wild defense and Fitton for standing tall in net. Well, got to give Tar a lot of credit there. There was some defense all over him. He was able to create something out of nothing there and put a decent scoring chance on for the Bulldogs. Buller fed for Berger. Berger spins, nice spin move from Berger. He'll try that far shot out again. Berger, oh, what a save made by Curran. Wouldn't have counted as he was in the crease, but man, Hayden Berger's a guy that just does all the dirty work and always finds a way to reward himself. Back the other way, shot on, nice save made by Fitton on the likes there of Tyler Brennan. Weidman will come on down and wait for his teammates to make the line change. Try to get it in for Buller. Muscled in the corner by Bryce Williams. But Buller is the one that's going to win out and get that ball here for the Wild. Lost it at the last second was Tyler Townsend. Nice spin from Buller. Buller shot on save made again by Curran. A great job by Buller recognizing the shot clock's winding down, get it off, and Wilma Wild. Just the relentless pressure on the Bulldogs right now. Uh, about second, or you should always want second chance, but this is like third chance opportunities here for Wilmot coming in shot on, went wide and pinned hard against the boards. There was Tyler Townsend. Shot from far out comes this time from Blake Weidman. Still pressure all about. This is about the fourth chance opportunity that Wilmot's had, and it's really just eaten up a lot of the game clock as well. Yeah, so, so wear down the defense, Jason. And Wilmot Wild just uh, all over it here. What can you say? They're looking to cash in, though. That's what their end result, what they want. But Oh, they're definitely busier right now than a B. Weidman shot. Nice save made by Curran. He tries to sprawl on that one. Berger got a hold of it, but couldn't get the shot off as he was jumping in the air to make something spectacular happen. Radburn shot from a tough angle, and Curran wasn't going to take any chances here. So he gets the stick on it and covers up. And I think a timeout's been taken here and a much needed one from Halton Hills. <laughs> yeah, great call by the referee, Mark Smith, so recognizing that. Uh, uh, you know, might be a good time for a water break for the goalies. They, they don't get the luxury of going to the bench uh, on a shift change and getting some water. So nice timely call there, but great job by Curran on those plays. Yeah, Curran's been absolutely sensational finding his way to, to track down these shots because Halt Hill, they're relentless and a lesser goal. This game could be about 15 to one by now, Mark, but give Brady Curran all the credit in the world to make it just 7-1. Yeah, so easy to get yourself out of position when you're being uh, pestered with those kinds of shots, uh, the flurry of the shots that he's been getting, but he's been standing tall and showing some nice movement as well. Well, this is uh, Curran's first game for the, of the season for Halton Hills. On Monday in that 12-10 overtime loss for the Bulldogs, they went with Carter Brown. Got a nice little goaltender battle going on with Halton Hills, and right now Curran's really showing what he's made of. Need some support offensively though. Tar shot, nice save made by Fitton. Fitton showing what he's made of. Big pass out, here comes Wyman. Wyman all alone on the breakaway shot on save again made by Curran Robin Kuntz. A nice passing play by the Wild but denied by a great goaltending stance by Curran on that play. And Hayden Chorkster Evans put a good shot on. He was held up a little bit, was able to get a solid chance on, but Reed Fitton makes the excellent save. So, middle portion of this period, it's been the goaltender highlight reel, more so on the current end, but Fitton, when he's been called upon, he's up to the task, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Great job, we've been rewarded with some great goaltending play in this game. And a save again, chance for Warden to make it two, we couldn't find any of them there. Curran makes the first save, and we saw Warden throw that one a little high and wide. Whistle goes and will be
be the way of possession now for the Bulldogs with five minutes remaining in this second period. Some good end-to-end -end action here as well too, but Holm Hillsby just as happy here with a set offense uh, could result in a goal and try and uh, chip away at this six goal lead. Charkster Evans shot from far out, say it was just went wide and in the crease was Riley Dexter as he picked up that rebound, tried to find a way to get it over the shoulder of Fitton. So the Wild get another possession here and it's been possession definitely in favor of these Wilmot Wild. We had the possession arrow at, like in basketball, it would definitely be that way. Warden flips it up for Buller. Buller can't get the pass completed. Nice job to get back there defensively was Matthew Mowart. One of these call-ups for today. Flipped up now, dealt with by Tyler Brennan. Nice rush from Brennan. Brennan retreats, needs a pick set, and he does get one. Mowart. Shot on down low, save made by Fitton on Michael Holmes. Some nice pick and rolls by both teams. That one very well executed by the Halton Hills Bulldogs, using their size and their shiftiness and getting a good scoring opportunity. That's what they really needed because every time we've seen Halton Hills come into the Wilmot end, shots are tough to come by and they always get two defenders on them and there was a good shot from uh, Wilmot from Blake Weidman, but once again, Curran makes a good save. Huge, huge second period here for Curran as the onslaught was on early, but he settled down and kept this one at seven to one with this speed and these sharp shooters that the Wilmot Wild possess. Hahn, back the other way, has a player out with him, shot from Hahn, and that was the right shot call to take the shot himself, but Curran makes the save. Yeah, great positional play. Looked like Hahn was trying to go off the far hip, but Curran making another nice save. Ball was lost there by Halton Hill, so Kuntz does the dirty work, scoops it up, and is, these Wild will make a fresh line change, get some fresh legs out with 2.53 remaining here in the second. And Buller tried to get the shot on, but lost it at the last second. So now will be Bulldogs ball. Up the floor, trying to get it up there is Caruso. Sean Caruso. Caruso stops, pops, what's he gonna do with it? We'll just feed it off for Tar on the far wing. Tar, trying to get away from a man. Kicked up now for the likes of Riley Dexter. Ball is still in play, shot on, nice save made by Fitton on Michael Holmes yet again. Yeah, definitely not, you know, the play calling, the efforts there for Halton Hills, but they just, you know, lack the scoring touch here in this game uh, compared to uh, the firepower that the Wilmot Wild have been showing. But Mark, as someone that's been involved with the cross as long as you have, you gotta like the compete level still from Halton Hills. Some teams may look at that 7-1 score line and try to pack it in with a lot of lacrosse left. Halton Hills, they know any, just a couple goals and you're right back in this game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Coach Blaine McCauley, he's uh, one to, he's been around the game a long time and he's seen games like this before. And he knows one thing, if you're not working hard, you're not gonna get back in any of these games. And Davin Kelly tried to, had a nice run there, tried to bounce pass, but couldn't get it completed with some sticks hacking his way. Shot on from the likes there of Matt Wyman, went wide. Still regaining possession here are the Wild. Matt Wyman already with a goal today, looking for at number two, we'll kick it off for Buller to Kuntz. Now fed off here for the likes of, of Blake Weidman. Save made by Curran. You could have the shot totals, I'd really love to know how many shots that Wilmot's had this second period. Cause it's gotta be more than about 20 or so. I, I agree with you there, and I mean, that's only the shots on net. I think you probably got as many of those just slightly off, off net as well. Spinning shot came from Truckster Evans, but Fitton makes the save. Back the other way here are the Wild pick up that loose ball. Nagy save made oh. by Curran, and that ball bounced around as well. Went off the Halton Hill defender, somehow was able to steer into the corner. 10 seconds remain on the shot clock. Trying to find their way through here are the Wild with 27 seconds remaining 
in this second period. Buller coming in, shot on, scored! I'm gonna say no goal as Buller did step in the crease. So Curran keeps his save streak alive as that one won't count. One move too many. Timeout here called by Halton Hills, but Curran being saved by the crease. Uh, Buller frustration uh, on that one. Knows he should have had the goal and punched the end glass there by the, uh, by the Wilmot bench. And a timeout has been called. Trying to draw up some strategy right now. I believe it was Halton Hills that called that timeout, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to just look at trying to get something playing. They know it's early in the season, too, and that this is not going to be indicative of the team they're going to have moving forward. But drawing up a play here, get the teams used to doing something like that in a game situation here early on, and obviously hoping it's going to pay off and they can go into the lead, into the dressing room maybe with a little bit of momentum. Yeah, you know what? It's been a, a good period still, I would say, for Halton Hills. Yes, they gave up a, a plethora of goals in this second period, but they responded well. They're obviously goaltending has helped, but for when they've been able to get those opportunities, they've been good scoring chances, and they made Finn be a lot more active in the second than he was in the first. Yeah, compete level has been there, definitely. Just the results haven't been there like they have been for Wilmot. Yeah, absolutely, and Joe will try to get something happening here. Holmes lost the handle, picked up by Riley Dexter. Dexter will bring it around and looked for Tar, couldn't get it. So Dexter will get a hold of it, and he's gonna have to throw maybe one last chance on. That goes wide, the horn goes to end this second period where the Wilmot Wild broke this one a little bit open, up seven to one after after two periods of play, but all in all, a real exciting finish I think you're in store for here in the coming up in the third, Mark. Yeah, 20 minutes of lacrosse still going, and, and they're gonna look at, both teams are gonna look at winning the period regardless of what the scoreboard is. Coaches are gonna go in and say, we're moving forward from where we are, let's go and have a great third period. So after two periods of play, it's the Wild Up 7-1 on the Halton Hill Bulldogs. We'll take a quick break and back for more coverage here on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Wilmot Recreation Complex. We're after two periods of play. The Wilmot Wild are up 7-1 on the Halton Hill Bulldogs. And joining me now from the Wilmot Wild is number 44, Ethan Fitton. And Ethan, what a second period for you guys. You really broke this one open. What worked so well for you guys in the second period? 
Yeah, it really started at the start of the intermission. Uh, coach told us that we had to work a little better, uh, work into inside on the offense and uh, get in on the goalie. Um, our offense just turned it up in that period on the long shift. And uh, once again, Reed Fitton played phenomenal in the second period. Yeah, you guys uh, got Fitton. Reed had to be a little bit more busy there, but he played really well. Ethan, what's it like here coming up as your first year with this Wilmot Wild team? And obviously, your brother Reed being the, the starting goaltender for this team. Uh, how's the experience been for you? Oh, it's such a great organization with Dan sur uh, supplying everything with us. We get the best. Uh, really opportunity that um, the OHL Rangers even get so it's amazing. Uh, Ethan what do you guys need to do to close this one out to make sure you guys get a, another win here on home floor? Yeah we just got to play strong D keep the offense up and just shut them down. All right Ethan thanks for that we'll let you head in the locker room and get ready to close this one out and we'll take a quick break and be back for more coverage here on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Wilmot Recreation Complex where after two periods of play, the Wilmot Wild are up 7-1 on the Halton Hill Bulldogs. And Mark, it was a real good second period for Wilmot, especially off the start, able to capitalize and break this game open a bit. Well, he had mentioned in the second period that they were 0 for in their previous game in power for the power play. And here they started just connecting there. We had Girdler with that shot from the outside with our first power play goal. And then uh, Radborn and Berger connecting there on a nice give and go at the crease. And it didn't stop there. Then we had Berger from an outside shot and everything was just working for Wilmot Wild at this point. Finally, Halton Hills will get back on the, on the board here with Zach Tarr from a great snipe from outside. Made it 5-1 for Halton Hill, or sorry, for the Wilmot Wild. But Wilmot Wild respond, Radburn with a big blast from up top. And then closing out the scoring, Tyler Nagy with a beautiful behind the back goal. Yeah, Nagy there continues to add to his point streak as being the top point getter for this Wilmot Wild team. And you know, we saw Wilmot break this one open, but we gotta give some love to the goaltending mark because what we saw from the goaltending there from Brady Curran was unreal to really just keep this one at seven to one. Yeah, he settled things down there, and I'd say the last seven, eight minutes, it could have been, he, he prevented this from being in double digits for sure. And Reed Fitton, on the other hand, 
it's hard to keep your focus when the ball's in the other end so much, but he stood tall there, and the defense for both teams have been, you know, have not been outworked, that's for sure. Well, after the two periods, it's 7-1 to Wilmot. We'll see how the Wild will find a way to close this one out. We'll take a quick break and be back for third period action here on Rogers TV. Welcome back to the Wilmont Recreation Complex as they are just about set to drop the ball for the third period. And once again, we thank you for joining us here on Rogers TV on this Sunday afternoon. I'm Jason Hagem alongside Mark uh, Schutzkowski, and there's a big shot on early from the wild, this time from Blake Weidman. And once again, Mark, another big save from Curran. Yeah, yeah, great save. Need a little help from his defense there. Brought it back into the crease and gave the ball back to the Wild, but no harm done as Halton Hills is going to bring the ball up here. Yeah, Halton Hills gets a hold of this one with Zach Tarr, their top point getter early on this season, has the lone goal for the Bulldogs. Tarr bouncing around, looking for some space. His shot on was deflected there, hit a body in front. And now still with it, though, are the Bulldogs. Back the other way, shot on once again, a block shot. This time robbing uh, Chorkev Evans. You don't see that too often, people willing to sacrifice the body, especially in lacrosse, Mark. But right bodies in the right place, blocking those shots before they can even reach Fitton. Berger, chance denied. Actually, I think good job defensively from Zach Tarr, but still the Wild with it. Couldn't handle that pass. Scooped up by the likes there of Aaron McDonald, but still the Wild with it. Behind the back chance from Berger. That won't be completed. Still loose ball. Five seconds remain on the shot clock. Shot from far out. Taken on by Ethan Warden. Save was made by Curran. Get ourselves a whistle. We'll still say it's Wilmot ball. Oh, great job by Hayden Berger there. Everybody going uh, off to the bench for the line change, except for Berger, who starts fighting for the loose ball. Gets rewarded with an interference call, and Wilmot Wild have the ball. Bowler shot on down low. Pad save made by Curran. Wyman flips it back. Shot on. Goes high and wide from Girdler. Still second chance opportunity. Good defense from McDonald. Berger again. Berger flipped it off here for Blake Weidman. Weidman weighed his option. Shot from far out. Save made by Curran. And most of the Bulldogs didn't really know where it was, but nice job to hop on it at the last second was Tyler Brennan. The only one that had the eyes and slips through that check attempt from Buller. Does Weidman. 
or excuse me, Brennan. Ball down low, pass goes up a little high. Can't settle it down now, Brennan with it. Brennan has to be forced to the far, far angle. Now flipped up by for Holmes, but shot clock violation and the defense has definitely been sensational for Wilmot all afternoon. Shot there from Buller. Second chance opportunity, tried to flip it on, but went wide. But give credit to this defense here, Mark. We've talked all about how well they're offensively been killing it today, have the wild, but defense has been huge. Oh yeah, just not really giving them any time and space at all. Another 30 second violation on that last possession. This is exactly what they want and they hope for in this third game of the season for Wilmot Wild. Yeah, absolutely. It's spinning away here is Cook. Cook's shot goes wide. Still second chance opportunity. That shot goes wide and a cross check from behind. No penalty call. Got a broken stick on the floor as well. That shot clock expires. And we're going to have a violation here. Yeah, they're going to remove, the, obviously, the broken stick off the floor. Still will be Wilmot Wild Ball, though. Nagy for Warden. Warden thought about it. A little high floater pass off the boards. Picked up by Nagy. Nagy, nice job to use the screens to his advantage. Warden. Thought about the shot while still keeping alive. Spins, trying to get away from the defender here in Matthew Mowart. Shot went wide. Nagy gets it, but he gets a fresh shot clock as well. Weidman shot on. Nice save made there by Curran. Putting the presence in the, between the pipes is Brady Curran. There's some fine ball movement by the Wilmot Wild. Having a guy wide open in front, but Curran there stands tall. Yeah, puts a big shoulder into that one on the Girdler shot. As you just got to think if that start to the second hadn't gone so bad for Halton, this would be a, a much tighter game with the way that Curran's been playing. Just needs some support offensively, and yes, we talked about earlier that they're a little short-handed, and that's definitely coming into effect as this game's progressed. A pass took a weird bounce. Fitton had to be extra sharp. Luckily for him, it went wide. Still, though, the Bulldogs staying alive. Shot goes wide from Chorkev Evans. Played up here now. Dealt with by Curran. Tried to at least make something happen as the shot clock was expiring. So now will be Wilmot Wild Ball. Bess. For Buller. And a smart lacrosse here. Just move that around. Eat up as much clock as you can because you have a comfortable lead as the Wild do, 7-1. They still want to add to it, though. Buller, shot from far out, goes wide, hits this side of the meshing. But not what the Wild want to have that one go over the goal line and count, and shot clock expires. Will be Halton Hill's ball. Halton Hill's getting a lot of pressure put on them, and there's going to be... Interference call on uh, Davin Kelly, so a wild get the ball back, and that's one you just can't have if you're Kelly. No, I'm not sure what he was thinking there. It's, there his team clearly had possession trying to set a screen, but uh, it would be what you want to do, but that was kind of more of a cross check. Yeah, more of a cross check. Luckily, though, the referees kept the whistle away, none in an infraction where the wild go back to the power play. Radburn shot while well, he was in motion, just went wide, and we've already seen what Radburn's deadly shot can do from that far out. Tar tried to hit the home run pass for Holmes, couldn't find him. Dealt with now by Braden Hahn. Now flipped up back for the likes of Ethan Warden. Tanagi. Calm, cool, and collect. The Wild right now, cooler than the other side of the pillow. Shot from the likes there of Evan. Girdler just went wide. Girdler, nice save made way from far out this time from Curran. Curran doesn't know where this is. Still Nagy with it. Off for Berger. Berger, fed off here for Warden. Warden for, the, for Weidman. Now for Girdler, and Girdler's making a solid impression here in game number three for the Wild, showing off what he can do with his shot. 
fed in. There's Warden shot on. Nice save again made by Curran. Flashing the pad. Weidman. Wait, shot from far out. Good save made and didn't want to take any chances there. Good job to get the stick on it was Brady Curran. Wilma Wild kind of echoing what they had done in the second period when they, they kind of took over the play for about six, seven minutes in that period. Same thing there, possession after possession after possession, putting the pressure on. Only difference though this time, Curran once again was huge and no goals to add to the stat line for the Wild. And someone, these Bulldogs really looking for one and it's been unfortunate for them. They've been able to get some good possession when they've had it, had some good pick and roll scenarios, but either shots weren't on target or Fitton had the answer. Yeah, and that's that's key. If, you're, if your offense isn't uh, keeping pace early on, your defense gets taxed, and I think you're starting to see that here with the, the Bulldogs. They're just getting a little tired and a little bit overmatched with some of these big bodies that Wilmot Wild have up front, like Buller and Radburn. And Buller takes a huge swing at one of the Bulldogs. Right after they called the play dead as he was in the crease, a huge swing of the stick went right on Tyler White's side of his head. And Buller, really good player, but shows some sign of frustration here. We've seen earlier he punched the side of the glass after he was in the crease, and yet again, good player, but can't have those moments get to you. Won't affect you in a game like this, but and those tight ones, this five minute major could be super costly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're you're looking at uh, having some momentum going and keeping things sharp in here. And this will, uh, you know, the only thing this is going to keep sharp is the, is the man down. Well, the Halton Hill Bulldogs, if they ever wanted a chance to get back in this game, right now is their chance. A five minute major assessed for Buller. That deliberate swing of the stick, shot was way far out there from Tar. Turned aside there from Fitton. Still though, playing with it right now is Cook. Drives in the crease, won't, wouldn't have counted. So now I have 30 seconds gone in the man advantage and it will be Wilmot Ball thanks to that crease violation. Just smart play here from Best. Just stand around, eat as much time off of your major penalty kill that you're trying to implement and kill that game clock as well. Yeah, with the shot clock running again this year with the man down situation, they'll try and you know run it down and try and maybe get a shot on late in the shot clock and, and maybe get a reset. But for the most part, they're truly totally looking at burning off 30 seconds at a time. Didn't happen there getting the reset, but good movement again of the ball by the Wild and just couldn't put that right shot on, but Something's got to happen here for the Bulldogs. This is their big chance. Got their big guys on there with Tar and Chorkev Evans. Chorkev Evans passed a little too much on it. Couldn't get it to Holmes. Oh, and a near big hit there from Hahn. Tar flips that one down low for Holmes and it finds its way through a big power play goal for Michael Holmes and make it seven to two now. Oh, Wilma Wild <laughs> finally <laughs> had had a little bit of a breakdown there, but a nice play by Halton Hills Bulldogs to get their second goal of the game here. And Zach Tarr in the middle of it as well here with the ball up top. As you said, from your first intermission guest, Michael Holmes, sneaks that in. Fitton still had a piece of it, but across the line, and Wilma Wild uh, still up a five-goal lead here. And Holmes gets himself his third of the season, and still, because it's a major, they still have the man advantage for a good 320. Still, like, this is your big chance to get back in the game, as I said before. Keep scoring. And you could have ourselves a quite an interesting finish. Yeah, game of momentum, Jason, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely is. Playing with fire right now, shot from far out, though. Easy save made by Fitton on that long drive out from Riley Dexter. Coming up the floor, Weidman. Flip that up. Dealt with now by Tyler Townsend. Or excuse me, that's Warden. Warden for Koontz, 
Actually, Warden with a nice fake pass. But Halton Hills didn't bite on that, and the shot from far out goes wide. Shot clock expires. Will be the Bulldogs' ball. Scooped up now with Tar. Tar letting everyone get it set up and kick it off here for Chorkev Evans. Now to Tar. Tar drive save made by Fitton. And I love how Fitton may make the save. There's a bit of a rebound, but he always gets the stick on it first. Yeah, very active mobile goalie. Not a big kid, but he covers a lot of real estate in a short period of time. Very quick reflexes. Yeah, Fitton's a guy that's really earned his stripes here in his first year as a rookie. Played unbelievably well and now named the starter here. And definitely earned chances for Berger. Save made this time again by Curran, but gotta love that. And it's in the family as we heard from Ethan Fitton earlier on. Now taking up the floor is Tar as Halton Hill makes the line change with 1.30 left on the Bulldogs man advantage. Fed off now for Tar. A lot of traffic in front, can't get the shot off this time is Holmes so wisely makes the pass out for Chorkev Evans. Shot from far out Holmes, hits the end boards and the shot clock expires will be wild ball. Well, good job so far by the Wilmot Wild penalty kill. Gave up uh, a couple of goals on the power play, but considering the amount of opportunities that Colton Hills has had on it, I say they've done uh, a pretty good job today. It's definitely been a real good penalty kill. And as well, defensively all around, really forcing tough shots for the Bulldogs. Have to go from the far out scenario. And always two defensive players on one offensive for Halton Hills. Shot went up high and wide, and now the shot clock expires with 40 seconds remaining on the Bulldogs man advantage. So at least one opportunity here. If they get a rebound and a reset, maybe a second opportunity before the end of this penalty, or the end of this, uh, this penalty from Buller. But uh, we'll see if there's gonna be the other, <laughs> if they get Buller's number on the uh, Halton Hills bench. Let's see if anything develops out of that for the rest of this game. Well, across obviously a game of aggression and you do something, they tend to retaliate. But you know what? Give Halton Hills as well some credit. We've seen plenty of times teams down a lot decide to play the aggressive game. Halton Hills, they're still trying to find the ball in the back. Yeah. And they do right there with Chorkev Evans. Hayden Chorkev Evans makes it 7-3, to three, the second power play goal on the major. So interesting here is uh, Buller has to now stay in the box. They can bring a fifth guy on the floor from the bench, but... Uh, but Buller staying in the box as we take a look at this. Nice play here, nice outside shot by Chorkev Evans. Nice down and low beats Fitton, and that's well needed by the Halton Hills Bulldogs. They keep trying to chip away at this lead. That's 7.23 to do it, a lot of time, all the time in the world, especially in the cross, as after Hayden Chorkev Evans gets his first of the season, it's now 7-3 for the Wilmot Wild. But pass intercepted there, taken up the floor quickly by Colton or by Kuntz. Back off here for Weidman. Blake Weidman. Give and go. Here's Kuntz. Kuntz oh, lost the handle at the last second to Evan Girdler. But he is able to win it back for Kuntz now. Koontz, a drive, scores! Dylan Koontz now makes it eight to three for the Wild. And we talked about off the top, Dylan Koontz had a little cup of coffee with Junior B, but with shots like that, he'll be coming back to Junior B pretty soon. Well, yeah, not, not really getting that odd chance for the offensive zone up there, but, but uh, he's showing some, uh, some nice, uh, accurate shooting from outside on this play. As, uh, as Dylan Kuntz puts one over there. Here we go, take a look at it. He gets the ball up top. Doesn't even look like he wants to shoot. Decides to let it go. Maybe a little mistake by Kerr in there, but uh, nonetheless, nice shot by Kuntz. Gives three stores a five goal lead. And Kuntz gets his first goal of the season. Make that as well, his first point. 
of the season as a Wilmot Wild this 2019 campaign. And as well, as we were in the replay, good chance again for Wilmot from Blake Weidman, but Curran had the ability to stone him. Loose ball, battle going on for it. Going to be won here by Tyler Brennan. And Brennan's had himself a nice game for being a, a, a guy kind of called up here, winning those loose balls and getting the ball out in transition for Halton Hills. Yeah, he's done a great job back there in bringing the ball up. Shot clock expires, wild ball, and they'll get out as quick as a, whi as a whistle can be. Coon spins away. Flipped off for Buller, shot. Nice spin and fire scenario shot from Buller. Didn't miss by much and hit the end boards. We'll go all the way back and Fitton will play it. Flip it up, eight seconds remain on the shot clock. Enough time to get back. Good long pass from Warden and good save made there from Curran as that one had some heat on it. Yeah, ni nice well placed shot. If it wasn't going the net, it was going off the uh, shoulder of Curran out of bounds and that's why Wilmot Wilds got the ball back. Weidman bounce pass, taken on for Girdler. Get it off here for Buller. Buller drives all alone, Buller shot and it went just wide. Ball bounced up high, picked up by Bryce Williams for the Bulldogs. Oh, nearly a giveaway. Oh, and still can't get a hold of it, can the Bulldogs there. Tyler White overran it, missed the opening pass, and then overran it. Radburn gets it for Buller. Buller gives it here for Nagy. Shot goes high up, and it just hits the top of the roof here. As this ball's been bouncing, especially when it hits the end boards, it gets that elevation. Yeah, it's, it's lively arena, that's for sure, which makes them for some uh, exciting, unsettled play, for sure. And we've seen a lot of that, a lot of loose balls that Halton Hills tried to win against Wilmont, just couldn't capitalize off that. Tar kicks it across at the far wing, dealt with here by Riley Dexter. Shot, and there's a, another bouncing ball, but Fitton, he showed his hops there and was able to get it off his much bigger stick and settle it down. Hudson, and his heel head off for a line change, get it off for Girdler. And just slowly patient is Ethan Warden. Oh, a little too much on that one, nearly hit Hudson in the head, he had to duck down, but Hudson still fights for it and gets a hold of it for the wild. Three seconds remain on the shot clock. Shot from far out, nice save made by Curran, fresh shot clock. Hudson lays the body on, trying to win it out, but going to be scooped up here by the Bulldogs. Can they break it up? No, they cough it up. But a penalty is going to be coming up for a high stick on Buller. Yeah, great press by that. You know, Buller certainly didn't, I don't think, meant to get a stick up that high. Questioning it with referee Mark Smith. And Mark Smith's going to give him another two minutes for that. <laughs> so Buller's going to probably finish off the rest of this game in the box. Yeah, definitely will. 3.22 left to go. It's a double minor, so... Buller's got the best seat in the house right now. Doesn't want to be there, but those seats were prepaid. So four minute double minor now for Halton Hills to try to at least keep clawing at it. Eight to three though, a little bit of a tough score line with the clock being their enemy. There's Tar, his shot went just wide, bounced up into the netting. Still though, Halton Hills ball. Yeah, they'll definitely want to strike quick here, but Wilmot Wild standing tall. They're going to try and burn off as much time off that clock as they can. Couldn't get that cleanly. It was Holmes. Loose ball shot goes high and wide this time from Cook. And that's just been the story of the afternoon here for Halton Hills, Mark. Great one-on-one -on -one scenario, but you shoot it way over the net, and now Halton Hills will get themselves a penalty as Fitton will head out back to the bench. Yeah, great effort by Braden Hahn there, making things happen. Drew a penalty on that. And so it'll be a little four-on-four four action here for a couple of minutes. Yep, four-on-four four action. As though uh, the Bulldogs will have 37 seconds of a man advantage. After heading to the penalty box for uh, the Halton Hills Bulldogs was number 14, Patrick Cook. 
Berger, shot. Nice job just to get a piece what of it there was Curran. What a shot by Berger, nice quick release. Yeah, Ber Berger may have the quickest release on this team. There's a lot of great sharpshooters on this team, Mark, but I wouldn't want to stand right in front of a Hayden Berger shot. No, and he's becoming not just that, that hard work and pest, so to speak, uh, on offense. He's becoming a very complete player with some really refined skills. Oh, absolutely. You can see the growth in his game from here just three games into this 2019 season from last year in 2018 where he was the guy you definitely would love to have on, love to have on your team but hate to play against. But now he's that more so because he'll do those things. But he's, as you said, Mark, quite an offensive presence and finding the success early on with uh, two goals today and Berger came into today with about four points. So he'll add to that total, make it six points now for Hayden Berger. Yeah, I think he missed the first game. He's still down the States playing uh, uh, or, or going to school. We played a little field lacrosse down there as well too and that certainly helped to uh, develop his stick skills. Definitely does as well. Helps up with the cardio because you're playing in that much bigger field compared to the box lacrosse. Tar, shot on, save made by Fitton. Uh, snuck oh, through, no. Jason. Yeah, it did. It didn't see it there. Didn't realize that somehow that ball had eyes and was able to find its way through Fitton. So make it eight to four. Another power play goal for these Halton Hill Bulldogs. Make it four. Yeah, it sounded like uh, to us up here that Fitton got a, got a piece of that ball for sure, but uh, like you said, had a little bit of eyes and a little bit of extra and snuck through as you see. And there bulges the twine and Holden Hill's not dying. Nope, definitely the competes there. Wyman misses that one and you just got to think, Mark, 0 for 3 in the first period. If they're able to at least get one or go 2 for 3 there, this is a much closer finish just Missed opportunities early on for Halton Hills, and right now as we hit the final minute of play, just a little too little too late for the Bulldogs. Wyman doing the right thing, eating up as much time as he can. Or Weidman, excuse me. He's worked from Weidman. He's had himself a solid afternoon for Wilmot. Yeah, absolutely. Gotta love the, the grinders. They don't show up on the, uh, on the points. Uh, and the scorecard that way, but this is a team game, and it's that effort is is needed by by all 18 runners on that team. Chance for a shot from far out. This time, that one was from Percy. Save was made by Fitton, and Wilma will just run around and try to eat up as much time as they can. Ball's loose. Tar with a shot. Save made by Fitton. Scooped up nicely by Bess. And that will do it as the horn will sound to end this one. And the Wilmot Wild are now 2-0 on their home floor in this early portion of the 2019 campaign with an 8-4 victory over the Halton Hills Bulldogs, Mark. Yeah, great effort by both teams. I'd say, like, you know, compete level, as you had mentioned, has been pretty equal for both teams. It was just a skill level of Wilmot Wild a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, uh, dominated a younger uh, you know, determined team, but they just didn't have as much to match up with Wilmot Wild today. Just couldn't find their, their ways through early on. Had their opportunities, did the Bulldogs, but the experience and the good goaltending from Fitton was able to help the Wilmot Wild hold on to this one and win this one 8-4 to four and go to 2-0 to at home. So, for my broadcast partner, Mike Schutzkowski, I'm Jason Hagholm. We thank you for joining us here, and we'll see you next Sunday for more Wilmot Loud Lacrosse with the Barry Bombers in town. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Sunday.